are important. You belong. You have a destiny and a future. World Impact Celebration Church Online is a spiritual family of believers from all over the world where you can discover your purpose and grow in the grace of Jesus Christ. You will hear teachings by Dr. Peter Youngren, Pastor Nathan Thurber, and others. You will participate in worship, prayer, and taking the Lord's communion every week. You will enjoy video testimonies and interviews from around the world. No matter where you live, your prayer request will be included in every service. This will truly be an international online church. Wherever you live, from Southeast Asia to Europe, North and South America, Africa, and Australia, this can be your spiritual home. All over the world, I meet people who ask me if there's a way that they can participate in the services from the Toronto Celebration Church. Well, we're offering something much more than just a streaming service. This is a full-fledged online church for you. The World Impact Celebration Church Online is a place where you can find a spiritual family family, a place of belonging, and where you can grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Set your calendar for 1030 a.m. New York time. That's 430 p.m. Central European time and 1030 p.m. for most countries in Southeast Asia. Heaven will include people of every culture, nationality, and ethnicity, and this will be a foretaste of heaven. World Impact Celebration Church Online is a place where you belong, where you will be nurtured, and where you can find your destiny. Toronto Celebration Church is a story of God's love drawing people from different backgrounds, cultures, even religions to be empowered to live their maximum life and to serve the community and the world. When I came here, I couldn't walk. I couldn't stand. I had a walker. But when I came to TICC, I was totally and completely miraculously healed. TICC is... Uh family for us, for me and my husband. Uh, one of the best things that I really like about TICC is definitely the youth ministry or the youth program. And I'm truly blessed here uh, by the simple message of God's unconditional love, grace and mercy. I found the church I've always dreamed of. A church is not about building. It is about people. People from every part of society, young and old. People from Asia, Europe, the islands of the sea. Africa and across the Americas, together creating a better society. Because to personally know God's love is the key to the ultimate life. And in a constant pursuit to find ways to communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ to Toronto and Canada, we believe that the best is yet to come. 
Well, it is an honor to join together and to have you with us on Christmas Eve for our Christmas celebration. And it's a tradition here at Celebration Church to have a one-hour candlelight service. And due to the limitations this year of the pandemic, we're not doing that. But we're going to have a very special and unique time together over the next few minutes and hour. Uh, in fact, um, for, let me first uh, welcome you and on, Megan. Well, and you, uh, before I explain what's happening, but Merry mm -hmm. Christmas. You, um, I know you want to say Merry Christmas to our, our church members as well. Sure. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone, from our family to all of you. We so wish that we could have been here uh, together this year, but, you know, next year we're going to have a great celebration. We sure are, and, mm -hmm. and we're ready for Christmas tomorrow morning, I guess. We are ready. <laughs> we are ready. You're ready for our live stream tomorrow? I am ready for our live stream tomorrow. <laughs> Might be in my Christmas pajamas. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll you'll have to tune it's, in and be find live. out. <laughs> but let me say tonight, it's going to be a beautiful night, and, and as I said, normally we have a candlelight service, and here's the, you don't have to get a candle ready, but if you have a candle, get a candle ready. Pastor mm -hmm. Peter is going to be joining us as well, and we're going to get our candles as well. And if you have one, as you get your candle, it'll be a little bit, a uh, little in a few minutes. You have some time. Uh, we have some beautiful carols and music tonight. Justice will be singing, and uh, Sharon Riley is joining us. She's a, a Grammy Award winning singer. It's going to be a beautiful time together. We have a word to share with you. But if you have a candle, I th I, and then Pastor Peter is going to have a time of prayer, and people have needs. Even on Christmas Eve, it's a time of celebration, but it's all, we all, there's t it's also time but people have needs and so we want to agree together with you on this Christmas Eve that Jesus helps you lifts you out of whatever circumstances that you are facing and if you are watching with us we would love to know that you're there so could you hit uh, amen Merry Christmas uh, so that we can see that you are joining with us today all right well with that let's we're gonna start with a song I believe it's go tell it on the mountain it's a uplifting song so let's go to that right now Jealousy, glory. 
One of our Christmas Eve traditions here in our service is to always read the Christmas story according to Luke 2. And generally all the kids come on stage and gather around and we read the story. Well, it looks a little bit different this year. So I hope families and kids are all gathered around, however you're watching today. And the last few weeks, we've been reading this story uh, at home with Leo and Malia. And, and today I thought we would do something a little bit different. And I brought in the first Christmas, uh, an illustrated version according to Luke 2. So here we go. Long ago, a woman named Mary and her husband Joseph traveled to Bethlehem to pay their taxes. Mary was soon to have a baby, so she rode on a little donkey. It was a long journey and Mary and Joseph were tired. The little donkey was tired too. At last they arrived in Bethlehem. The town was very crowded and Mary and Joseph looked some, for somewhere to stay, but there was no room for them at the inn. The innkeeper felt sorry for Mary. You can sleep in my stable, he said. That night, Mary's baby was born. Mary and Joseph knew that he was a very special baby, a wonderful gift from God. We will call him Jesus, said Mary. Mary wrapped baby Jesus in a cozy cloth and made a cot for him in the manger. And if Malia was here with us, she'd be pointing out and saying, baby, baby, she loves babies. Nearby, shepherds watching their flocks saw beautiful angels shining above them. 
A baby has been born in Bethlehem, an angel said. We will, he will bring joy to all the world. The shepherds rushed to Bethlehem. When they found baby Jesus in the stable, they fell to their knees in wonder. In a far off land, three wise men saw a bright new star in the sky. They knew it was a sign from God to tell them that a new king had been born. They followed the brightest, they followed the bright star. It led them to Bethlehem and to baby Jesus. The wise men gave baby Jesus three special gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now every year we remember that first Christmas by giving gifts to people we love. They remind us of a baby Jesus who was God's very precious gift to us all. And that is the Christmas story according to Luke 2. And now would you please welcome our very own Kids World member, Justice singing Joy to the World. What a beautiful song. Thank you, Justice, for singing. We so much appreciate you and uh, for doing that. Now, as I said, Pastor Peter will be with us shortly, and I have a, a sample candle here. Obviously, uh, I can't give you one as we normally do at our Christmas Eve service, but I, you know, if you, uh, don't run now. I have something important to say, but maybe you have a candle laying nearby. We're going to have a time. That we're going to light candles. We're going to sing a, a special, beautiful song on a time of prayer, and maybe you have a need in your life. Uh, you might even want to write it down. You, maybe you're believing God for, you know, we're coming to the end of 20, uh, 20. For some, that year has been a struggle. 2021 is a new year. Maybe you want to commit something to the Lord. Write it down. We're going to have a time of prayer for that uh, at the end. Right now, I want to talk. I have a, my Christmas Eve message is this, home for Christmas. Home for Christmas. There's a famous Christmas song. It's entitled, I'll Be Home for Christmas. Christmas. I'll be home for Christmas. It was sung by well, numerous people. Bing Crosby is one of the famous singers of, of the song. Now, the song was written from the, view, uh, the viewpoint of a soldier during World War II. It's actually a rather melancholy, even though, you know, we've, we sing it and it's become part of our Christmas tradition. It's actually, if you think about the words, a rather melancholy song. The, the end of the song, of course, it's about being home for Christmas, but at the end it says, if only in my dreams. And so it ends on a rather melancholy note. In fact, oddly enough, the song was banned during World War II by the BBC uh, because they thought it would make families too depressed because their sons were at war and they wouldn't be coming home that Christmas. And so it was actually banned. But for us today, it's become one of the 
defining songs of Christmas. I'll be home for Christmas. Now, in 2020, 2020 has been one interesting year. I think we could all agree on that. Interesting could be good or bad, but, you know, but it's been an interesting year. And I would say in some ways 2020 has given a new meaning for home or at least reinvigorated what home means or the understanding of home, you could say. You know, Cambridge Dictionary uh, has a, their word for 2020. Uh, I looked it up, and it's based on how many, you know, the number of uh, searches in, in the Cambridge Dictionary uh, how word has gotten. And the number one word for 2020, according to Cambridge Dictionary, is the word quarantine. Quarantine. And I'm sure you're familiar with that word. We all are. 2020, uh, the pandemic has, has been known, but then that, that's resulted in quarantine. And if you think about quarantine, quarantine has given home a whole new meaning. We've learned, many of us have learned to work from home, uh, or, uh, to do school from home. Parents, You've become teachers suddenly. Doing, you're a school teacher at home. Uh, home, we shop at home. We do pretty much everything at home now. And 2020 has given, in some ways, given home a whole different slant, a whole different uh, meaning, if you will. And of course, on the same token, the word quarantine is related to home is also uh, uh, meaning separation separation in some ways, right? You may, we've been separated from friends and families, told not to visit, and we've all experienced that. I've talked to members in our church who couldn't visit parents in the long-term care facilities in this year, so they were separated. They were stuck at home, but their other family that they're hoping to visit also at home, so it's been a, almost synonymous with separation. I know my family, normally we vis go out east to visit in the summer. We could not do that due to the lockdowns. And Chris, family usually visits at Christmas. They can't do that as well this Christmas due to the lockdown. So quarantine is, it's home, but also home is also comes to mean a bit of separation from fa fr family and friends that we, that we care for. I don't know what comes to mind when you think of home. What do you think of when you think of home? There's a, a famous quote about home. Uh, it's it's uh, and it says, home is where the heart is. Home is where the heart is. You've probably heard the quote. In fact, I, I, I had heard it many times. I was curious, where did this quote come from? So I looked it up. I'm not you know, a genius. I'm smart, but I'm not a genius. And so I don't have everything memorized. And so I, 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 I Googled it. It was written actually in 23 AD by a Roman, a famous Roman scholar and philosopher. His name actually was Pliny the Elder. It doesn't really matter, but it, that's what, who wrote it. Pliny the Elder. And he was actually a, a renowned person at the time, a friend of the emperor, but he wrote, home is where the heart is. And, and in essence, what that statement means, it means it doesn't matter where you are physically, but home is synonymous with a deep emotional pull, a feeling. It's a, a feeling of affection, of belonging. It's a foundation in our, in our soul, in our psyche of, of, of warmth and of love. It could be family, friends, but it's more than a physical place. I think we can all agree to that. Of course, we have physical homes where we live in. You maybe live in a condo, apartment, a home. You know, we have physical homes, but the home, when we talk about home, it's something much, much more, isn't it? Home is where the heart is. Home is where we belong, where, where we have an emotional pull and attraction and where we feel loved, where we feel warmth. Now, my message this Christmas Eve is about Jesus and how Jesus left his home. We say, well, Je at Christmas, we remember when Jesus came uh, as a baby, came in earthly flesh, born in a manger. And so on one hand, you could say he left his home in heaven and came and lived on earth. And that is true, physical home. We all live in a physical home. And in that sense, Jesus, you know, he, he took up home here I I on this physical earth. But it has a deeper meaning as well. Just like home for us has a deeper meaning. You know, Jesus left his home, which was in, 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 in fellowship at the right hand of the Father, in fellowship with his Father, place of love, of warmth and affection, and he entered into the, the evil of our world. He entered into the coldness of our world. The, he entered into the depravity of our world, our, where we were spiritually blind. He entered into all of that. So he left his home in heaven, and he entered our world. Why did he do that? Well, number one, he, Jesus left his home in heaven so that we can have a home in heaven today. And again, heaven doesn't just a physical place. It's that place in the divine, I put it, in the, in, the, in the circumference of who God is, in fellowship with him. Jesus left his home. He took on earthly flesh, entered our darkness. So we, you and I today, we could have a home 
in his place so in heaven or in the divine. Let me explain that. John chapter 14, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions or uh, uh, should be put said rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place, I'll come again and receive you to myself that you may be where I am also. On one hand, he talks about a house, and that speaks of a grand palatial estate. But on the other hand, he talks about rooms, and rooms speak of intimacy. It speaks of coziness. It speaks, speaks of a warmth, the place of belonging. Jesus says, I, I've come to give you a new home. And you know, he's not talking about giving you a new place to live in the physical sense. I wish that would be true, but it's not. He's not, as not promised that you're going to get a new place to live this year. That's, that's not the point of his message. Again, it's to that deeper meaning. It's to that, you know, home is where the heart is. It's that deeper reality of belonging, a place of, of warmth, affection, and of, of love. And, and we, I think we all, humanity recognizes, instinctively knows, that life is more than what we see. Life is more than the physical realm that you and I interact with every day. It's very real. We don't deny physical reality. You see my physic, physique today, and I can't see yours. I'm just looking at a camera right now. But when we're allowed to meet again, I'll see your physique. You know, we, we, we live in a physical, but life is more than that, isn't it? Life is emotions, life is dreams, life are thoughts. You know, we have, there's a, there's a spiritual reality. Uh, and, and sadly, many people never feel at home. I'm not, again, not talking about a physical home. I'm talking about that home is where the heart is. Many people, many people describe that they journey through life with a ghost-like feeling uh, of never belonging, not being at home in this world. Uh, these are people, it could even be a person of success, of notoriety, of power, of wealth. You know, it's not, it has nothing to do with the physical surroundings. It has to do with the inner heart. And, and sadly, many, some people could go through life with that empty feeling, never feeling like they belong, never feeling like they have a home. Home speaks of belonging. Home speaks of warmth. Home speaks of uh, acceptance and of love. So when I say Jesus left his home to give us a home, I'm talking about that home of love in our heart. And that starts with experiencing God's love. God's love, the God of the universe is love and acceptance. Jesus came to bring us into that love so that we could have a home in our heart. And it starts with experiencing the God of the universe's love. Jesus came to reveal that. You could say that Jesus was born to introduce us to God's love. You know, throughout history, Mankind, people even today, have a view of God as vindictive, mean, punitive, out to get them, punishing them. It's, it's warped humans' minds and caused human beings to do evil things in the name of religion, wars and all kinds of, uh, of arrogant, prideful things. It, that's not God. Jesus came to introduce us to God so that we could have a home in his love, knowing that we're accepted, knowing that we're loved by him. I don't know about you, but have you ever been in a home? You go into someone's home and you feel ill at ease. You don't feel, you know, you don't feel at home. You feel, Ill. you just can't wait till you leave. And I think we all have, first of all. Uh, but I think in some ways that describes humanity and their view of God before Jesus came to reintroduce God. Almost ill at ease in his presence. You know, people have offered sacrifice. You know, even in ancient times, people offered their children to, to the deities to appease him. Atrocious things have been done because people don't feel at home or they feel ill at ease in, the, in God or, or approaching God. Jesus came to introduce us to who God is. And he says, you know, that's not what God's like. God is love. No one has seen God, but Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen God. And he, he was full of love. To a woman caught in adultery, he said, I don't condemn you. To people who are notorious sinners, he fellowshiped with them. He wasn't turned off by sin. He wasn't standoffish. No, he loved people. He loved people. You see, Jesus was born to bring us into that divine. People were afraid, ill at ease in the divine, ill at ease in God's presence. Jesus was born to bring us in. He left his home to bring, to bring us into his home today where we can have fellowship, knowing that we're loved, having a sense of belonging. As I said, too many people go through life with a ghost-like feeling of never belonging. But in God's love, we find that place of belonging. Number two, Jesus left his home in heaven to make a home in our hearts. Jesus left his home in heaven to make a home in our hearts. And when I speak of hearts, again, I'm not talking, of, I'm talking about our soul, our mind, our emotion, our spiritual man. He came to make a home in our hearts. You know, I heard a story of a little girl 
And she heard about, Jesus, you know, that she had been in church and they had talked about Jesus coming and living in, in, in a person's heart. And so, you know, she, as little girls, as little, as little people do, I should say, you know, she, 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 uh, she's like, Mommy, does Jesus in your heart? And Mommy said, yes. And so she put her ear up to her mommy's chest and said, well, uh, oh, I think I hear Jesus making breakfast today in your heart. Of course, you know, it's a funny story. It was actually a true story. But, it's, you know, it, kids have a, an, an imagination. Uh, again, there's a deeper reality than just the physical world. I'm not saying that Jesus, you know, is cooking breakfast in your house and all that. I'm talking about a spiritual reality where God's love through Jesus comes and lives in our spirit person, our emotions, our thoughts, our minds, that, that spiritual realm. For Colossians chapter 1, it says, this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This is the secret. C.S. Lewis, famous author, said, the Son of Man became a man so that men might become the sons of God. Jesus left his home in heaven to make a home in our hearts. You know, there was a, a famous philosopher in the name of Bertrand Russell. Russell. He, did, he did not have a good view of, of, of religion in general, Christianity included. And he said, you know, he, he, he said things like religion was superstition and that, that any good religion did was far outweighed by the, by the evil. And I, I, again, I, I've already alliterated this evening that, that evil has been done in the name of religion. Again, that is because people have a warped view of God. They're trying to, you know, appease God. But, but he, he said a quote, uh, and it struck me. He said, and I quote, nothing can penetrate the loneliness of the human heart except the highest intensity of the sort of love the religious teachers have preached. Again, this was an, he was an atheist. He was an agnostic. Some points an, ag an agnostic, other times an atheist. But, but he, again, let's read it again. Nothing can penetrate the loneliness of the human heart except the highest intensity of the sort of love the religious teachers have preached. Sadly, he never experienced that love. I, I, I'm sad to say, at least as far as I can, I can read. But the, he highlighted the reality that I'm talking about today, that human beings, there's an emptiness without this love. We were created for God's love, and without it, it's like there's an emptiness. There's a ghost like feeling there's a I, I describe it a pervasive shadow on our thoughts and on our on our mind it's a shadow of coldness for some people or of darkness or even of shame it's like a crack in the heart a stain that never leaves our our thoughts our minds our emotions it's a stain that follows us it could be a stain that tells us you'll never be better than the people than your than your than your father your mother never better than the people you that raised you it's a, it's a pervasive darkness it, it hangs over people you see, that's why Jesus was born. That's why he left his home to make a home in our heart. Jesus was born to stand with us in our mess, in our brokenness, in our shame. He was born in human flesh to feel what we feel, to see what we see, to experience what we experience. And the point of it all was so that when our brokenness, our emptiness, our shame, our brokenness meets his love and his reality, it is transformed and made whole. It doesn't mean it changes what's happened in the past. Nobody can change what's happened in the past, but it means that our brokenness, our shame, that emptiness is filled up with his love, with his restoration, and made whole again. Yeah, that's what the Christmas story is all about. Jesus leaving his home to make it a home in our heart. And you could talk to believer after believer. You could talk to myself included. How that his love has transformed my heart. I think we can all relate to that, those shadows on our thoughts. You have a thought, but it's shadowed by the darkness. You have a thought or emotion that's always shadowed by the, by the depression, shadowed by the, the guilt, shadowed by the stain, shadowed. shadowed. But he came, he, Jesus came to make amends, to make it whole, to give a new heart, the scripture says. And we receive his love and he makes us whole. I think of Perzola, I've shared her story, but a lady in our, who, who in the first lockdown of this year was an, a severe, uh, experienced severe depression, uh, a debilitating depression. She had a boyfriend, she had a job, and yet because of the depression, anxiety, fear, she said panic attacks would grip her, she could shake, she'd stay up all night, sleep all day. It was, it was wrecking her life. Uh, and, and I can imagine for her that, we, that, that what she experienced, that, that, that the, the shadow, the brokenness, the, the, the weight uh, on her mind, on her emotions, on her heart. And yet she describes how someone invited her this year while well, we were allowed to meet at 30% capacity to, to Celebration Church. And to make a long story short, she encountered God's love and God's love made her whole. Now we're in a second lockdown. She's not depressed, full of joy, full of life. See, that's what happens when we encounter his love. Jesus left his home to make a home in our heart. Thirdly, and last point, Jesus left his home to bring us into a spiritual family. 
Jesus left his home to bring us into a spiritual family, a spiritual family with other followers of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, it's a place of belonging. I think in 2020, we've discovered that more than ever because at a time when many Sundays we weren't allowed to meet in person, if anything, it drove in my heart and many of, the, of our church members whom I've spoken to, it, reiter- I mean, it reemphasized the importance of belonging in a spiritual, sometimes you, in a spiritual family. Sometimes we don't know what we got until we lose it. But uh, thankfully, we haven't permanently lost it. We will meet again. But there is strength in belonging or, or in, in being a part of the spiritual family. In, in the scriptures, the word home is interchangeable with church or temple or synagogue or gathering. The, the psalmist David said, I will dwell in the house. Or you could say that the spiritual family of the Lord forever. It's a place where we eat together. We feed on God's word together. We, we spend time together. We pray together. We're strengthened. We are encouraged. And it's much more than just something physical that's happening. It's a spiritual transaction. The word uh, used for this is often koinonia in the scriptures, which means fellowship, partnership, or communion. Jesus left his home in heaven to bring us into a spiritual family. It's a beautiful, beautiful reality. Jesus left his home in heaven, as we learned tonight, number one, to bring us, left his home in heaven to bring us, to give us a home in heaven or in the divine. Number two, Jesus left his home in heaven to make a home in our hearts. And can I invite you this evening to allow Jesus to do just that? You see, many times we're told, like like, like I shared, humanity is inbred within us to be ill at ease in God's presence. Oh, I don't want to approach God. Uh, you know, when you're ill at ease in someone's house, you just want to leave. A lot of people just want to run because they have an image of God as being tough to deal with, kind of nitpicking, vindictive, punitive, eye for an eye, pound, uh, you know, uh, if you do wrong, I got to get you, you got to appease him. The reality is he doesn't need to be appeased. He, he, has, he sent Jesus to eradicate those thoughts and to tell us he has nothing but love towards us. And he, had, he committed himself through Jesus to prove that love to us in all our brokenness and all our pain and all our wrongdoing. He says, I'm going to break through all of that and I want to reveal my love to you. And I believe you're tuned in tonight because he has been reaching out to you to say, I want you to experience that love in your brokenness, in those ghost-like areas of your heart. I want you to experience the restoration of his love. You say, how do I do that, Nathan? You do that real simple. You say, you simply do it, the scripture says, by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart and confessing him as Lord with your mouth. It would be my honor this evening, Christmas Eve, to do that with you. Can we pray together? Just say it like this. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I have, uh, thank you for loving me. I believe that you took my sin, you took my shame, you took my guilt, you took the brokenness of my heart. You died and you rose again and you're alive today. Right now I receive your forgiveness and I receive your life and I confess, Jesus, you are my Lord and you are my Savior in Jesus' name. It's been my honor to pray with you tonight, and we have other things that are going to happen in a few moments' time, Pastor Peter, uh, and our candles, but let me just invite you in these moments right now. Uh, First of all, the scripture says all of heaven rejoices when even one individual receives Jesus, and so know that know that heaven is rejoicing over you this evening but we also rejoice with you and in a little way in in a small way we'd like to connect with you to give you a gift as well some information a book to say to give more information of this gift that you've received the information's on the screen how you can get the, that free material uh, the salvation book on our website you can receive that right now but it would be our honor to 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 send you that gift so you can make take advantage of that we'll be praying for you we love you and when the door we invite you to keep tuning in on Sundays to our services here online and when we're allowed to meet in person come and meet us again but but it's been our honor tonight jesus left his home to give us a home amen in a moment we're going to be praying we're going to join together with you in in prayer you have your candles ready pastor peter is going to be with us i'm going to throw right now to megan she has something to share Uh, so let's go to megan right now well thank you nathan for that beautiful christmas message and right now we just want to say a great big thank you to Uh, for you, for all of your generous giving in 2020. You know, we were able to impact families and people that were in need, who needed food. We were able to disperse food. And some of these families are feeling isolated and and they were just so happy to receive it into their homes. And through our missions uh, offerings and through our giving, your generous giving, we were able to reach people and and to make a great impact. So a great big thank you to all of you who uh, have been so generous in your giving in 2020. 
I've just joined from the, from the preaching set, but I echo what Megan ha, has just shared uh, with you. This beca- it's because, you know, when I look back at 2020, we could have been limited by so many circumstances, not being able to meet. And, we, and you know, but, and, and when I say we, I'm not talking about Megan and I, Pastor Peter and Tina, or the other pastors on staff. I'm talking about we as a church family. You have shown faith. I think it's been more encouraging as, as pastors of a church than any other year, because in a year when you could have given up, and you could have said, I'm just going to, you know, I, I, I'm just going to wait until we're allowed to come back together and just put everything on the shelf. You've said, no, this church, and when I say church, is all, each of us is going to keep helping people. And you've done that with 25,000 pounds of food that you've enabled this church family to give uh, out this year or the, the Bible schools on, on the different continents, how they, and, you know, you've enabled this to keep on going. It's remarkable. It's beautiful. And so as we come to the year end, I know, you know, every year uh, we always, at the end of the year, most of us, we look at what we've given and make sure we've given what we had committed to in our hearts that year. I know you and I, Megan, we do that. And then, you know, it's often top it up because God puts faith in our hearts. So we're coming to the year end. I want to encourage each of us, let's finish the year strong and let's believe God for great things in the end of this year, but also launching into 2021. Let's forget, we got a year ahead to reach a lot of people, a lot of ground to be taken. I believe our best days are still out in front. And let me say, it's the giving family who makes this possible. Thank you for your so on this Christmas Eve, there's, uh, we're going to pray in just a moment for individuals' finance. We've seen, I, I mean, I tell you what, I've seen more praise reports in the area of finance this year than I have in any of the years that I've been pastoring. God has been so good to people in our church family, so good to each of us. Uh, first, before we pray, let us put up some information on the screen how you can give. If you're part of our Toronto family, you can see how you can give there through e-transfer or text your gift, or you can mail in your gift. You text the TIC, make it your text to TIC. You can phone our office. Uh, there'll be people in over the holiday. Days. You can, or you can go to our uh, website. We'll leave that up there for just a moment's time. Uh, uh, and then we'll go to our worldwide screen, how you can give if you're part, watching from around the world, whether it be on, on Pastor Peter's website or e-transfers, your U.S. dollars, the euros. You can see that information there as well. We appreciate every dollar matters. And if you go back to the Toronto screen one more time, how you can give as well. Megan, let's pray for the finances of, of, of individuals. Uh, we've seen so many great answers to prayer, but also I know there are people still believing God. I think of one small business owner in our church as the business is suffering and, and, and there's others. And so let's pray for those individuals. Would you lead in the prayer, Megan? Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to, to give, Lord. And I thank you for all of those who have been generous. Father, we we thank, thank you that they're, they are blessed, Father. And we thank you, Lord. We give because you've given us so much, Father. So we thank you that we are blessed to be a blessing. Thank Father, you, Father, we thank you that we are a bright star shining in darkness. And Father, because of your love that you have for us. So Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your generosity and blessing towards you, us. Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for your giving. We love you. Now, here's what's going to happen. We're going to go to one song. Pastor Peter's joining us here on the set. We'll get your candle ready. We're going to have a time to, with candle lighting. We're going to have a time of prayer. But first, let's go to that song, and then Pastor Peter will be with us. stars are brightly shining it is the night of the dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining as he appeared and the soul fell thrill of hope the weary world rejoices and yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the Angels voices, oh night divine, oh night 
Christ when Christ was born. All night, divine. All night, when Christ was born. His gospel is peace. Change shall he break, for the slave is our brother. And in his name, all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy. Grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord Oh praise his name Just a couple announcements for you before we go and, and light our candles together. Tomorrow, December 25th, will you join Nathan and I live from our home where we give those special gifts to our Myanmar students. It'll be a great time to be together with you at 1 p.m. live on Facebook. Secondly, on December 27th, we have a special guest, Dr. Brian Stiller. He served as the president of the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada. He was also the former president of Tyndale for 12 years, served as chancellor. So so he's got a, we have a great special guest for you so you'll want to tune in to make sure to hear what he has to say lastly new year's eve service a special message with pastor peter it's going to be happening at 6 p.m and then also at 9 30 p.m so you want to tune in for that new year's eve special message and right now we're going to go over to pastor peter and nathan for the lighting of our christmas candles merry christmas everyone well, there's a lot of good things happening, and we have our candles ready, and I know that uh, Nathan has been forewarning you to get your candle ready, and, uh, and we're going to sing Silent Night here at the very end. I just want to say to you, be encouraged. The thought that has really been a fresh thought for me this Christmas, there's so much in the Christmas story, is that the angel told Mary, you are highly favored. 
and Mary was just about to go into one of the worst times of her life. She was pregnant, and how would she explain this and uh, the feelings of shame and all that that would be associated? And so sometimes we think that if we're going through a tough time, oh, that would mean that God's favor is not with us. But on the contrary, you know, if you're facing something difficult, know this, that God's high favor is with you and will take you through because His favor and grace is greater than anything. And so uh, take that thought in addition to all the other good thoughts. And now we're going to sing Silent Night, and then I'm going to pray the prayer of benediction with you. So let's enjoy together Silent Night. Thank you. What a beautiful rendition of Silent Night. And here we are, uh, Pastor Nathan and Megan and myself. And I just want to pray with you. And then Pastor Nathan just told me, I have no idea what he's talking about, but he has a little surprise. So uh, don't turn off right after my prayer. It'll be very quick, but he has something to surprise us with. Father, I thank you. Thank you for every family represented in our audience who is watching all over the world and our Toronto church family and those internationally. I thank you for the peace of God to be upon every person. 
in every life. I thank you, Father, that this light, just like my light blew out here, I take that as a symbol. Sometimes we feel like they're the strong winds that want to blow out our light. But I thank you that our light is going to keep shining. And I thank you that you give everybody grace this holiday season, whoever they interact with, online or in person, that we are the light to the world because your light is in us. We thank you for this. Thank you for blessing everyone in Jesus' name. Merry Christmas to you. Amen. Merry Christmas. And so here's our surprise. I, I found I didn't even know they were doing it, but our youth department had prepared a virtual Christmas concert for us. So we're going to sign off this portion of the service, but continue to be tuned in on Facebook and YouTube for a virtual Christmas concert by our youth department. So it's going to be beautiful. Merry Christmas so to Merry, everybody. Merry Christmas. <laughs>